Hi everyone! Welcome to Soup Dog Recipes. I'm Mandy. Today, I'm going to show you how to make Ma Po Doufu the authentic way. Don't expect the Western takeout style. That is not what you're getting in this video. There are eight characteristics for a good Ma Po Doufu, which are Ma La Xian Xiang, Neng Hua Chui Zeng, translated as numbing, spicy, umami, fragrant, tender, smooth, green, and whole. I know it may sound complicated, but trust me, it's not difficult at all. Let's get started by making the Dao Kou La Jiao. I have here 10 to 12 pieces of red dried chilies, which I have already cut them into half inch long pieces. You can definitely adjust the amount depending on your spice tolerance. This is Hua Jiao, also known as Sichuan peppercorns, it is not spicy at all, but it has a tingling, numbing effect. If you have never cooked with it, please use a small amount, such as one teaspoon, and see how you like it. Sichuan peppercorns can be overpowerful and ruin your dish. These two ingredients complete two of the characteristics, numbing and spicy. Let's toss them into the wok and toast over low heat for a couple of minutes. Do not burn it. Otherwise, it will bring a bitter taste. Let it cool a little bit. Grind them finely with a blender. The direct translation of Dao Kou La Jiao is peppers under the blade. Because back to the time when we didn't have blenders, the Sichuan peppercorns and the red dry chilies are chopped by a knife, which I think is tedious because when I go chop them, they just jump all over my countertop. <laughs> Technology saves the headaches. Next ingredient is Sichuan Dou Ban Jiang, also known as the soul of Sichuan cuisine. Whenever you use Sichuan Dou Ban Jiang, you always want to either chop it or blend it because those board bean pieces are quite firm. Let me show you one. That is going to affect the texture and the flavor of the final dish. So, add two and a half tablespoons of the Sichuan Dou Ban Jiang to the same blender cup. Follow up with one and a half teaspoon of fermented black soybean, aka Dou Chi. I'll link the product in the description as well. If you don't have it, you can use one and a half teaspoon of Korean soybean paste. Continue by adding two tablespoons of Chinese cooking wine. Blend everything into a puree. Set that aside. We'll move on to the tofu. Depending on the texture, tofu are classified into silken, soft, medium, firm, and extra firm. The difference is how much water you press out of it. The more water you press out of it, the firmer it gets. I'm using soft tofu because I like the tenderness. Firmer tofu contains a lot more plant-based protein as you are paying for the same weight but less water ratio. We'll blanch the tofu first. Bring one and a half liter of water to a boil. Add half teaspoon of salt and slide in the tofu. The salt is not to season the tofu. Instead, it will prevent the tofu from breaking easily while stirring. Let this simmer for a couple of minutes. Carefully take it out and set it aside. Once you have the ingredients ready, the rest of the steps are quick and easy. Turn the heat to high and heat the wok until it is smoking hot. Add some cooking oil. Swirl it around to coat the bottom of the wok. Toss in 200 grams of ground beef. That is what I have in the fridge today. You can also use pork or chicken. Try to break it up into small pieces. We don't want any meat patties. It should be nice and loose so the little beef bits can cling onto the tofu. Once all the meat has changed the color, push it to the side. 
There should be some oil pulling out from the beef. We will use that to sauté the doufan jam paste. Once you can smell the fragrance of the doufan jam paste, you can toss in two tablespoons of minced garlic, one and a half teaspoon of minced ginger, some white part of the scallion, one teaspoon of paprika, which will give the dish a bright red color, two teaspoons of sugar. Mapo tofu is super flavorful. A little bit of sugar will bring out the umami flavor and balance the tanginess. Half of the dao kou la jiao. Reserve the other half to add at the end. Continue to stir for a couple of minutes. We'll pour in the beef stock. Don't forget to rinse the blender cup so you don't waste any flavor. Turn the heat to high and bring this to a boil. Give it a taste to see if you need to adjust the flavor. Mine needs two teaspoons of soy sauce. It should be a lot saltier compared to your normal taste because the tofu doesn't really have that much flavor. And this dish is normally served with white rice, so you need the flavor to be strong to go with the rice. Turn the heat to low again, and we will simmer the tofu for five minutes. While waiting, we will quickly mix one tablespoon of cornstarch and a quarter cup of water. Add it to the wok in three batches. The trick here to stir the tofu without breaking it is to push everything with the back of the spatula. Do not pull it towards you because the edge of the spatula is sharp and it will break the tofu. Remember, the last characteristic of this dish is called whole. We don't want broken tofu. Okay, now you're ready to enjoy this mouth-watering mapo tofu. Sprinkle the reserved daoko la jiao and the diced scallions as garnish. I specifically made it with a lot of sauce, so it goes perfect with the white rice. The smell is so good. If you walk into a Sichuan restaurant in China, this is what it smells like. The flavor is so rich, spicy, numbing, and aromatic. After you eat a few bites, you start sweating. <laughs> but it's so good that you can't stop eating it. I hope you give this a try soon. As always, you can click the link in the description and find the printable recipe. Thank you for watching. This video is sponsored by Soup Dope Recipes Wok. This is the wok that I'm selling and I am proud to recommend it to you as I have been using it on my channel for years. I know a lot of people don't have the confidence in using carbon steel cookwares due to the complicated seasoning process and food sticking to the wok. So, this wok is pre-seasoned from the factory. You can use it after a thorough wash. The user guide will come with simple maintenance instruction for you to take care of the wok. Most importantly, it includes a video link that talks about how to use a carbon steel wok like a pro, so nothing sticks, which saves you a lot of headache. If you're interested, you can click the link in the description and check out the item. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.